Hi. Um, since my car exploded on Thursday, um, I have to present <laughs> this, my portions of my slides tonight. Um, so I wanted to go ahead and record that. Um, so that's why I'm using a video. Um, I will only be using my notes that I've had previously that were on note cards um, that I was going to use to present. <laughs> um, and I'm just going to be doing my portions of the slides. Um, I did try to shoot um, and time myself for 30 seconds to one minute per slide so I hope that time range fits with the thematic of 20 minutes um, so I decided that the video would probably be best face to face since it gives you a chance to still see that I'm interacting um, and that I'm still not just relying on my slides for information um, so let's get started so you've already probably heard about Rencalf a little bit about who we are um, our name. So I'm just going to go ahead and just reiterate our philosophy of giftedness that you probably heard already. Um, so our philosophy of giftedness has three portions. Um, first off, it's our definition of giftedness. And I really think it's important that I just read it verbatim because it really encompasses, or paraphrase, encompasses what we all had an idea of for our definition. Um, so that's that students are above average students, gifted students specifically, are above average students who have exceptional needs in writing, reading, and visual arts that must be met within their educational setting. All children, regardless of their religion, ethnicity, or social economic status are granted the right to access of, of gifted education. That was very important to for all of us across the board. Um, going off of that, making sure that we encompass all students, um, it's important that we give a fair and equal access education to all students for gifted edu gifted students. Um, students, we wanted to create a curriculum that was not only challenging but also um, a created a foundation for them to um, support their growth and help them grow. So nothing, um, nothing like intensely challenging, but gives them that challenge to um, reach their maximum potential um, and give them the access to challenging curriculum that um, they deserve and that they need to grow as individuals in the gifted education world. Um, our philosophy was based off two things. I am personally a big gardener. Um, advocate. We use them a lot in museums. Um, Steph and Britt more relied on Renzulli, so we kind of met in the middle, and so we kind of had a joke that it's Renzulli with a touch of Gardner, like a sprinkle. Um, so for the Renzulli education model, we use the uh, three-ring concept to uh, discuss how it supports students of all backgrounds and personalities to be identified and serviced, which we'll kind of go into during our nomination process. Um, I even kind of included that with my visual arts. Um, and and then for Gardner, I heavily relied on his multiple intelligent theory to kind of look at how to construct my visual arts, um, since that is a portion of his multiple intelligences. So how I identified, how I constructed my assessments, and how I also um, constructed my actual structure of the visual arts class. One second, I'm going to slip slides. First talk about um, the visual arts portion that I'm doing, um, the assessment plan that I have in place for it. Um, so this is going after the nomination planned and everything that Britt and Steph probably already talked about. Um, so after the nomination phase, um, we go in the assessment phase, our assessment plan as we talk about. Um, and we went back and I went back and forth about what I wanted to do. I wanted to make sure, because art is a very broad topic and there's very different ways that gifted students could showcase their gifted talents in art. So I wanted to create a portfolio that could really show that. So um, when I created that portfolio, I wanted to make sure to have different options to make sure that they had a chance to do that. Um, so each year they'd be given a prompt word to kind of create their portfolio. So for example, on here I put discovery, but you could do believe, um, stuff like that. Um, and in their portfolio, they're expected to give an abstract, a writing sample, um, and a writing sample can be a poem, it can be an essay, it can be a journal review, it just has to be a writing sample. Art media selection, um, so for instance a student can pick a painting and give a verbal explanation about why um, it helps with, um, as an example, for discovery. So, like, for instance, my painting, it's not a Van Gogh, but um, the fact that, um, okay, this is discovery because it's talking about the stars. Um, just going into more detail about that actual art media selection. It doesn't just have to be a painting. It can be a book. It can be um, a poem. It can be anything that's art media related. 
um, as long as they can give an explanation about it and kind of explain why that relates to that word. Um, and then technology integrated portion, something technology related, a PowerPoint, um, a video, something once again, um, and then tactile object that they create. Um, I will point out that I wanted these all to individually be added. Um, I know sometimes there can be an overlap for different things. Um, so I did allow for one overlap. So say if they wanted to use a in, in technology and graded portion um, for their art media selection to kind of like do what I'm doing, like pick art selection, talk about it, something like that, or use their media, that's a one, they're allowed one overlap. Otherwise they have to turn in everything else. Um, they're also given a prompt, a time art, art assessment. Um, this once again goes back to using that word. Um, they'll be given a prompt depending on the year and they'll be given 30 minutes to construct their art piece to represent that prompt. Um, whether that is um, drawing, whether that's writing, whether that's painting, doesn't matter. They can even um, construct something out of clay. They just have to present after that 30 minutes. Um, art teacher observation and narrative checklist. Um, so there's a lot of observation going on, so this can't be missed out. There is a parent survey um, that's considered. It's not heavily relied on. There is an evaluation and observation from all teachers, um, their own personal classroom teacher, an art teacher, and a gifted education teacher, and also another teacher just that has educational background training, gifted educational background training, which I'll go into. Um, that's just important to include during that portion. One second. Okay, so now these students are approved and now they get to move forward with the programming. What does that look like? So I was too excited about this. I really liked how you had set up that you had your students just come in and work on their projects. That's what I wanted to do. So students will be given um, two hours out of the week to come into the classroom um, based off their schedule, um, based on working with the language arts, um, their language arts teacher, and will come into the gifted classroom and will go ahead and um, work on whatever project they're working on. Um, they have to pick an independent study that they want to do because I want to cultivate independent and investigative practices um, and explore and inquire. Um, so they will pick an independent study that they want to do and they will work on that in their class. Um, and then over time, they'll be given um, at the end of the quarter they will um, end up presenting what they've discovered. Um, once they've discovered that and they've finished that, um, just kind of like you did the Eiffel Tower bit, um, then they'll move forward with a different art project. Um, it's based off quarterly, just like I think it was Steph's. Um, so every quarter they'll get a new project. Um, and then we also, I wanted to include different opportunities throughout the year. Um, so say if they were in Fredericksburg, we would do once a month field trips maybe, or um, once a month integration, um, just opportunities. So one month they might go into Gary Melcher studio to look at art. Another month they might have an art teacher from um, Richmond Art Academy, not Richmond Art Academy, BMFA come up and talk to them. Um, just different opportunities, someone coming in and talking about professions. Um, something different every month um, that maybe might even just like a 20, 30 minute session for talk um, to kind of give them the opportunity that they deserve. What my research was all about. Um, so um, social and emotional needs um, is something that I've become very passionate about since I started this class. Um, and so something that we wanted to make sure was that um, the socio and emotional needs of students were met. Um, and a lot of my research for my annotated bibliography came in handy. Um, so what we had is quarterly meetings. Um, just like I've been talking about that there's quarterly check-ins um, and assessments, there's quarterly meetings. So that's um, check-in with students and their grade assigned teacher mentor who is trained. Um, I keep talking about training um, and that's what I'm that's what's very important. Um, we want to have training for um, teachers. We want them all to be trained in gifted education. It's a perfect world for Rencaf Academy and that's what we're working with. So we want them to all be trained in gifted education so that they can serve their students correctly. Um, just like you would want to have training for a student who may need um, certain things, you want to do the same for gifted students. Um, we want to have um, gifted teachers are certified. We want to have gifted teachers to have open lunch as an offer for gifted students to kind of come in um, and come in and kind of have a minute to kind of like 
take a second, be around their peers, everything like that. Um, we want to have open class on Tuesday and Thursday, 30 minutes before and after school to give them that chance once again. Maybe they want to do more research on their project, or maybe they just want to hang out with students who have very um, similar personalities. Um, that's okay. We want to give them that chance to come in the open classroom. Also, we want to have a monthly parent meeting with parents to just check in and maybe educate them on different topics about gifts and education, like perfectionism versus gift versus um, anxiety, and also um, just kind of educate them. Um, and that's something that the guidance counselor will also host for teachers quarterly. Um, so, um, but not only for teachers, but for students. So, have educational discussions with these kids. Talk about organization skills, stress man management skills. All all these skills that students, gifted students, education students have a higher chance of meeting otherwise. I'm really passionate about this subject if you can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, um, if I didn't do my research on anxiety of students, I was going to do my research on rural communities. So I did a bit of research and used utilized that for this portion. Um, so our special population, one of them, I know they already kind of talked about one, but another one that we chose was um, students in rural communities. Um, so that's what we believe that all children should be serviced no matter the ethnicity background, going back to that philosophy. Um, and part of that is the rural student community. So um, something that we looked at was the Talent Act. Um, the Talent Act has a portion that's specific for rural education, um, making sure to expand that program. This is where my notes come in handy. Um, to make sure to enhance rural education, that includes professional development, that includes training, and that makes sure is also including more access to info and resources for students. Um, and so that's something we wanted to base RENCAF off of. Um, so once again, we live in a perfect society in RENCAF. So we wanted to serve our students in rural communities by offering buses um, for them to get a chance to go to extracurricular activities and weekend hours um, so students can attend any activities, after school open classroom or before school, after school, before school, before school open classroom, um, or clubs worry-free. Um, that's important for a child's growth. Um, that's important for a child's future. Um, and that's something we want to make sure they have access to. Well, that's all I have for my portions of the slides. Um, I will point out that some of the resources I used for my research and for my portions of the slides um, was um, are on the was is on the resource slide. Um, but I definitely used a lot of my annotated bibliography, my personal experience, um, and also just research throughout the class to really construct what I have. Um, this was really interesting to do, and I loved it, and I learned a lot about visual arts education. So gifted gifted education, not just visual arts education. Thank you so much, and I hope this works for a presentation. If not, I'll redo it all over again on Thursday night. Thank you.